What kid doesn't get excited about his first day in high school? Every kid, right? At the time we were going to Gage Park, it was our first day of school. Man, we were kids making some really dumb decisions. <laughs> Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise, like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy's Hey, what's up? My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, you already know Chicago. So and Suburban and let's get this video on the road. What's up guys? Hey, shout out to my boy El Jefe he stopped by yesterday. You know, he's the one that's been helping me a lot with this whole uh, acting gig and you know, if you guys want to see a culture that is really untalked about about Chicago, the Rammers, check out his channel. Yeah, rack them. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff that in Chicago was untalked about you know, and not brought really into the highlight because, uh, I don't know, I guess it's a, it's a culture that's being forgotten, but we're gonna make sure that we don't let it be like that. We're gonna bring it out. One of them is the Rammers. He talks about it a lot on his channel. Check it out. Hey, Gage Park. Gage Park is a high school that is predominantly black and Latino. I think 10% was white only back in the days where I went. And we're talking about the early 90s. But they already had metal detectors. They already had security on staff. There was this one security guard. He was a, a black dude that was like, I forgot his name, but he was on us all the time. And he was the real deal. <laughs> you know, keeping all the fucking kids in line. And it was just a crazy time because we were so young and you know, fighting other gangs. And there was a lot of gangs at Gage Park. There was a lot of drama, a lot going on, you know, testosterone with the kids and, and all that. But our first day of high school, you know, it was me and two of my boys. <laughs> we had a stolen Riviera, a Tech 9, and a 38. I was dressed to impress, you know, I had my suede shoes, you know, back in Chicago in those days, we dressed a lot different, you know, um, a lot of people, you know, think that we were dickies and shit like that, that is a culture from California, and that's, that's the Chicano culture that they have, in Chicago, if you grew up like on the south side, you've probably been the five stars if it's still there. You know what I mean? Back in the day, it was on Christiana 26th Street, five stars. You would buy your Converse there and you would buy, you know, dress pants with the, the, the tijeras, you know, on top. They were dress, dress pants. And you would wear those with Converse and a dress shirt. And you would really take care of your shag, you know, big ones, curly ones single ones and that's just that's just how it was our first day of high school it was three of us we were happy we had the stolen riviera we had a tech nine we had a 38 i was dressed to impress i had my suede shoes my dress pants you know i had a bald with a small shag and my two boys you know uh we were just ready we were ready <laughs> We put in a dollar twenty-five of gas in the car, and we we took off. We went to school. We actually got up a lot earlier that day, and just you know, we were ready to get into some shit, or you know, have a shootout, or or whatever. We were just ready. Well, we show up to school with you know all the artillery, everything, and goes to show that at Gage Park, the first day of school, everybody fucking ditches school. <laughs> We drove over there and there was nobody around. <laughs> so 
So we drove around in circles and circles, and we felt like fucking losers because nobody was at school, nobody was walking the streets because it was so fucking early. And you know, it was it was a a, a day that we prepared for like all summer, <laughs> and it didn't happen. When you're young, you make a lot of decisions without thinking because obviously your brain is not functioning at a maximum rate. It's, it's not fully developed. So you're making a lot of emotional and instant decisions at the time. If, and you know who you are, my two boys, both of you lived on Spalding, you know what's up. You know, we made a lot of bad decisions, but, but what we have to remember and still to this day think about is that we made it out and now we have the chance to actually show these youngsters, these shorties, that there is something better out there than gangbanging and, and all that shit. I get it. I get it. You love your hood. You love you love where you grown up. You might have some bad blood with because of you know wars and rivalries that's been happening for years. You know shootouts, all those kind of things. But let me tell you something. When you go do time, you're gonna probably sit with some of those dudes that you've been fighting with, having shootouts, and they might even turn out to be some of your best friends in there. So then that has to really make you think. Was it worth it? Was it really worth it? Was all that shit worth it? I've told you guys in the past, now that I'm older and I think about it, one of my biggest missions is to not let these shorties commit the crimes that they're committing now, fighting each other, catching murder cases, catching 10, 20 years, and getting out and being old, like when I got out in my 40s and wondering what was I gonna do now? You don't come out with a fucking degree unless you really have a prison that has programs and stuff like that. And there's very, very few prisons now that have programs like that to you. So you can invest time in yourself. Very little prisons have programs now. They want you to come back. They want you to catch another case. They want you to stay there for 20, 30 years. And there's a lot of homies that are not coming back, bro. Jefe yesterday, you know, me and him were oppositions on the streets. Whether I was an SD or a king, we were still oppositions. We were younger, we would have fought out, we would have had a shootout, we would have we would have done damage. But now that we're older and we see how much things have changed and how much everything has went down the drain like bullshit. There is no loyalty, there is no love, there is nothing no more because everybody's out to get their own. Backstabbing, setting up, robbing, all that shit. It's when I talk about so much about burning bridges that later on you might need. It's time. It's time for a change. Chicago is a beautiful city with so much culture, with Chicano culture. There's so much out there. Even the gang culture is unspoken of because it's never really been highlighted until now. You'll see different channels now highlighting it. But we went years unnoticed. And we have a beautiful, beautiful culture out there from graffiti on the walls to how we dress, to the classics, to freestyle, everything. Even the way that we drove the rammers and did all the shit that we did. But in order for us to keep that alive and actually show these youngsters that there is a better way is by actually coming together and doing shit for the community and actually showing them that there is a better life out there than prison, than dead, than money. Money ain't everything, trust me, I've had it. And you know what? I am more happy now than I was when I had all that money. I'm happy today because I actually get to do something I love that's trained work with people and just, you know, grow, grow as a person. If you don't grow as a person as you get older, then you haven't done nothing with your life at all, nothing. And that just goes to show that sometimes you have all the wrong teachers in your life. Instead of having the right ones, hey, this is why I say, man, I just challenge you one day to be wrong to strong and see what it does for you because at the end of the day, if you're the bigger man and you can actually set an example Walk the walk, talk the talk, 
I guarantee you, you'll feel better, your family will love you more, and everybody will respect you. It's how you treat people at the end of the day is how far you get in life. It's one of the success steps. How hard you work, how you treat people, and how honest you are with people. Hey. But that's just me. I just share my story with you guys. I share my, my trials, my tribulations. I share everything transparent. And I just tell you that there's a better way than all that bullshit. My name's JC. I am Wrong and Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, we only have one life to live, bro. Might as well live it out here free, sober, not gangbanging, and just taking care of your family. Be a real man. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.